Good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday night services at Valley Baptist Church. I hope they're all, you're all doing well. And I'd like to welcome all those that are watching us through uh, other social media means. We're glad that you joined us this evening. And uh, I'm going to be preaching a message that uh, could go a little bit long, but just bear with us. It's very important that I deliver this message to you. And uh, under the current circumstances, uh, you need to be aware of this and you need to be uh, diligent. You need to be alert. If you are a believer, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it will encourage you and strengthen you. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that the Lord will draw you to himself that you may be saved. So let's get started this evening and I'll start praying and then I'll read the scripture. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, again protecting us for another week. Uh, your protection is daily, uh, in the daytime, in the evening. We lack nothing, Lord. We have all our needs met. Thank you that uh, at least we're together as a family, not only as an earthly family, but we're also together in spirit as a heavenly family. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless. Uh, the message tonight that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you wanted to accomplish and father we do love and we thank you lord we recognize that you are in control of all things lord god even though even if we do not understand what's going on you do and we're in your hands and thank you father uh, for your precious son the lord jesus christ and i i pray this in his holy name and the name of the lord jesus christ amen so let's get started. If you have your Bible, open it up to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter for the reading this evening. 2 Peter to start us off. And tonight I'm going to be uh, preaching on the topic of false prophets. False prophets, false teachers, okay? Uh, false brethren. So uh, the topic is beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. And I'm going to be reading for from the book of 2 Peter, beginning in chapter uh, 2 and verse number 1. So 2 Peter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So very clearly here the Bible is telling us that there's going to be uh, false prophets, there's, there's going to be false teachers. And if you study the scriptures, you'll know that there has always been those that are working for Satan who are trying to uh, destroy everything that God does. Of course, they're not able to do it, uh, but we need to be aware of them because the Bible says here that they, when they come, they come, uh, it says in verse number uh, number one, even as there should be teachers among you who privately, privately, that is secretly, they will attend to infiltrate secretly, okay? And so let's go to the uh, Word of God, okay? Uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 and 2, Isaiah 58 verses 1 and 2, this is what the Bible says, Cry out loud, spare not, lift up the, thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. The scripture here is speaking to the pastors. And the pastors are supposed to warn. They're supposed to warn and sound the alarm. And that's what I am doing. I'm sounding the alarm concerning false prophets and false teachers. There have always been false prophets. And God war warns us. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah... During the, the days of Jeremiah, there were false prophets. Jeremiah 23 and verse 16, the Bible says, 
Jeremiah 23, 16, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They, make, they speak of a vision of their own heart, and out of the mouth of the Lord. They say, still, they say still unto them that despise me. The Lord had said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their own heart, No evil shall come upon you. This is what the false prophets were saying. Oh, it's okay if you live like in sin. Nothing will come to you. Nothing will happen to you if you keep living in sin. And God says that they were speaking from their hearts, not from the word of the Lord. God didn't send them. Preachers who are not God sent and only encourage you to sin. That's what these false prophets did in the time of Jeremiah. In the time of Micah, the prophet Micah, there was also false prophets. And the Bible says in Micah chapter 3 verse 5, Micah chapter 3 verse 5, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. Let me stop right there. Err. My daughter said it's err, not err. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put it not into their mouths, they even prepare war against them. Therefore night shall be unto you that you should not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you that you should not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confound it. Yea, they shall cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. They preach peace, and if you listen to them, you will no longer be able to listen to God. So this is a warning against false teachers. They speak from their own hearts and not from the word of God. You need to be aware of those, okay? Jesus spoke about false prophets in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Matthew 7, verse 15, Jesus said this, Beware of false prophets. That's a warning. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, inwardly they are ravening wolves. You should know them by their fruits. Do man gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So when Jesus warned about false prophets, he said that they look like sheep. They look like sheep. You know, in John chapter 10, uh, the Lord says in verse number 28, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. But the Lord says right here, they're going to come in sheep's clothing. What does that mean? That means they're going to look just like you and me. They're going to be dressed up. They're going to carry Bibles. They're going to look just like a Christian looks. You won't be able to tell any difference between you and them until you see their fruits. The fruit that they produce is rotten fruits. Okay, in Matthew 24, 24, Jesus also prophesied about false prophets. Matthew 24, 24, the Bible says, Jesus is speaking and he says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. If it were possible, that means that it is not possible to deceive a born again believer. But if it were possible, also means that those believers are going to be coming very close to being deceived. Very close. Remember, we measure everything that we hear from anyone against this holy book, the Bible, the Word of God. That is our measuring rod, our measuring stick, our ruler. Okay? And why am I talking about false prophets right now while we are sheltering at home? Well, let me tell you a little story. When I was in the Marine Corps, I was stationed in El Toro, Marine Corps Air Station in uh, Irvine, California, or uh, uh, Tustin, California. Uh, the base is not there anymore, it's closed. But when I was stationed there in August of 1990, I was deployed uh, as an advanced team to go to uh, Saudi Arabia and participate in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. 
Now, they flew us there, and when we got there, they placed us in these warehouses, and all the military services were there. We were waiting for the ships to arrive so we can unload the equipment of war, the tanks, the helicopters, trucks, and everything, the weapons, ammunition, everything. And so as we waited there, there was, uh, you know, we were there like 10 days, maybe two weeks. And in that time, we didn't have any news. They, they hadn't given us the orders yet. We, we didn't know what we were going to do exactly and how we were going to be divided and who was going to go where. And so there was a famine of information. And when you go that long with that information, you begin to uh, cling to every little thing that you hear. And I'm warning you, during this time, when you don't know exactly what's going on in our government and the world, you can start getting conclusions that are not correct. You need to keep your eyes on the Lord. Well, while I was there with all those servicemen, uh, since we didn't have any news, we we would uh, get old newspapers and pass them around. You know, we would read everything on the newspapers, try to get some kind of a drop of information that was relevant to what was taking place. And you know, maybe a, a Marine would go up to the battalion level and he would hear something, just overhear something, and he would come back and say. Uh, tell us that and then we we would hear that and, and then you know we would tell the, the guy next to us and that guy would tell the next guy so it was like a wildfire every time a drop of information came it was like wildfire and in this times that we're sheltered at home and we don't exactly know what's going on we have an idea but we have all these things and these thoughts going through our minds that really are confusing we need to be really careful we need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is very easily right now because we are vulnerable to false information. We are very, very, in a very weak position right now. We don't know what's going on. We're just in our homes. We're going and getting the groceries and back and that's it. And so these false prophets are rampant on the internet and all the social media sites spreading false information you need to be aware so this is a warning uh, and it'll help you to be able to recognize some of these false prophets when you hear them okay all false prophets have some things in common okay remember this all false prophets have some things in common let me give you some Commonality, commonalities of false prophets. That's things that they all have in common. Number one, they use deceits. They use deceits. Okay. They privately entice you. Look at verse number one. But there was false prophets. Second Peter 2 1. Second Peter 2 1. There were false prophets. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be. Future tense. Now. Future tense now, as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in the heresies. Okay, so they're going to bring in things that are not true, things that are contrary to the faith that we believe in. And they all deceive. Here they come in privately, they come in secretly. Okay, you don't know who they are because they're dressed like Christians. They'll go right into the church and sit with you and eat with you and partake and, and talk to you and and, and uh, you, you'll, you'll see them and talk to them and you'll think nothing of it. They all use deceit. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 4, Galatians 2 verse 4, the Bible says, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately, secretly, to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us unto bondage. So in the book of Galatians, some had infiltrated the congregation to take away uh, believers from the congregation. Okay? They take you captive. They take you captive. If you start listening to what they're saying, they will take you captives. Literally, spiritually, they spy out on the church they'll walk right into your congregation and spy you out 
And you believe that they're okay because they're dressed like Christians. And they talk like Christians. And they carry Bibles like Christians. And you don't think there's anything wrong with it. 2 Timothy 3.6 2 Timothy 3.6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It reminds me of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're ever learning, selling their books. Ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. If you don't read and study your Bible, you're a good catch for them. If you don't read and study your Bible, you are a good catch for these false teachers. Stay on your knees. Stay in the Word. Okay? Study your scriptures or you will become a casualty. Okay? Be faithful to the services. I know that you're not able right now, but when 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 we start up back up again, you need to be faithful. Okay? Nothing should keep you out of church. Don't make excuses that you're tired or you all worked over time or whatever uh, reason you have. Okay? The Bible says in, in the, the book of Hebrews 10:25, not forsaking that means to quit. Don't quit the assembling of yourselves together. That's going to church and worshiping. Don't 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 quit that. As the manner of some is, that means that at that time people were already doing that, skipping services. You don't want to do that, okay? As a Christian, you will become very weak when you start missing services. Very weak spiritually, okay? When I was a member of West Coast Baptist Church in Vista, California, I was the bus mechanic. One Sunday morning, they called me out. The, the Sunday school hadn't even started yet, and they called me out because the bus had broken down. So I got I, I got, got in my car, went home, put on my coveralls, and I went to where the bus was uh, to repair it. I made the repairs, and I went right back home to change while I was at home uh, changing, I realized that I had never been at home on a Sunday at that time of the morning because I'm always in church. And while I was in the house changing, I heard a little knock on the door. Guess who it was? It was the Jehovah's Witnesses. You think you're getting out of church, but you're getting into something else. Stay in church or they will come and get you. They know Satan knows when you're not in church. So they all use this seat, these false teachers, false prophets, they all use this seat. Okay. Uh, they teach, secondly, they teach contrary to the word of God. Okay. You need to understand something about God. God never contradicts his word. Never. He gave it to us. It's perfect. He will never violate his own word. So when you hear somebody saying something that violates the word of God, your, your, your alarms in your mind better go off. Alarm, red alert. Something is not right here. They'll teach you contrary to the word of God. They bring in damnable heresies. Verse 3, 2 Peter 2, 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Okay. Verse 1, false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, things contrary to the word of God. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, Deuteronomy 13, verse 1, uh, thir chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible says, If there arise among you, look at the warning God gives us here. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. Red alert, red alert, let us go after other gods. Hold it. There's only one God. That's Jehovah, the God of the Bible. There is no other God. He's the most high God. 
This false prophet are telling you to go worship other gods. That ought to be a warning to you. Something is not right here. Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not hearken, God says. You will, you, shall, you will not listen to that person. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Don't listen to them. Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Remember, God doesn't contradict his word. As I was reading my message right earlier, the Lord showed me something in, in this passage. In the last part of the, the passage, God says, For the Lord your God proveth you. God tests you. God tests you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. God's going to test you to see if you love Him with all your heart and with all your soul. That ought to be get your attention. Okay? So not only do they uh, teach contrary to God's words, in 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, the Bible says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if these ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They have a form of godliness. Okay? They look like Christians. They carry Bibles. They have a form of godliness. They speak the lingo. It's hard for you to tell the difference. Because they have a form of godliness. They carry Bibles, they dress up. But Jesus said, By their fruits ye shall know them. Listen to what they say. Because out of the abundance of their heart, they speak. Listen to what they say. God never contradicts his own word. False prophets all teach contrary to the word of God instead of the gospel. Okay? There was a book that became very famous and they even made a movie about it. Supposedly this little boy died and went to heaven and came back. Listen, I don't need to watch a movie. And I don't need to know what anybody thinks or imagines to know that there's a heaven. I know there's a heaven. Because the Bible tells me so. I don't have to go see a movie. All I have to do is look at the Bible. Okay? Don't get sidetracked with books like the shack that makes Jesus to be a long-haired hippie. That's nonsense. King James Bible all the way. The true Bible in English. King James Bible. That's the Bible that I recommend to you. Thirdly, they all have great followings. Isn't it sad that these false teachers and prophets, they all have great followings. Look at verse number two. And many, you see that? Second Peter 2, 2. And many shall what? Follow. They have a lot of followers. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Because they have many followers, the way of the truth should be evil spoken of. Christians are going to be hated if they're not hated already. They're going to be hated even more. They all have great followings. They have many followers. There are many places, but they're nothing more than entertainment centers. Whether women preachers, by the way, if you uh, believe the Bible, then you have to know what the Bible says about women preachers. Okay, let me show you from the Bible, not, not making anything up. I'm simply sharing the word of God with you. God says there should be no women preachers. Okay, in the book of First Timothy chapter 2, look what the Bible says. First Timothy chapter 2. 
First Timothy chapter two. And look at verse number eleven. Okay. First Timothy two eleven. Don't miss it. First Timothy two eleven. Should there be women preachers? Well, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Opinions don't matter. What matters is what God says. What does God say? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the women learn in silence. With all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Let me see that. Let me read that again. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. A woman does not have the authority to teach man. God tells you why. Verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman was the one that was deceived. This is why God doesn't want women to be preachers, because they were deceived. First Timothy chapter 3, First Timothy chapter 3, verse number 1. This is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, to be a pastor, he desired the good work. A bishop, verse 2, then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Did you see that? To be a pastor, you have to be the husband of one wife. It doesn't say the wife of one husband. It says husband. Women are not to, allowed to be preachers. Okay? The Bible tells us very clearly. In 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. The last days will be known by the apostasy. We're in, we're in the days of apostasy. In Matthew 24, verses 1 through 5, the Lord tells the disciples the first thing, before he, he tells them any future events, he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. We are in the days of deception. We are in the days of apostasy. Okay? The last, the last days will be known by their apostasy. First, uh, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. This know also that in the last days, that would be now, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That's dangerous times. Shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. You see, they have the appearance like they're Christians. But denying the power thereof. From such, turn away, God says. Turn away from them. God says, don't have anything to do with them. Okay? You're thinking, but, but they're Christians. But they told me they were Christians. They will come to you dressed like sheep. But inwards they are ravening wolves. By their fruits ye shall know them. God is not going to contradict his word. So what do we do? We're living in the last days, days of dangerous times for the Christians, for believers. We're susceptible right now while we're sheltered in home to be open to different information venues. And the false prophets are having a field day right now, spewing their apostasy throughout the social media and on television. What are you to do?
is a believer. What are you to do? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. As believers, our job is to keep our eyes on the Lord. And remember that God does not contradict his own word. Let me give you four things that we can do during this time to keep us on guard and, and vigilant. Okay? Number one, we are to be diligent. We are to be diligent. Look at the, uh, back to our text in, in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. And this time we're going to go to chapter 3 and verse 14. What are we to do in the mess, in the midst of this situation that we're in right now, uh, flooded with information? What are we supposed to do? Number one, be diligent. Be diligent. Don't be lazy. Search the scriptures. Don't get lazy and get to the point where you accept everything that you hear. Okay? That's foolish. You need to hear and search to see if it is so. That's how you know. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 14. The Bible says, Wherefore, because of all these things that are going to be happening, that are happening right now. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such a thing, such things, be diligent that ye may be found and uh, found of him in peace. We are to be diligent. We are to be, the word diligent means to be alert, to be awake. Be searching the scriptures. Be, be diligent. Don't be uh, wishy-washy about the scriptures. Okay? Don't be a settler. Don't just settle for a little phrasings or uh, one verses uh, adorned with uh, with flowers and all that. Don't settle for just that. Search the scriptures. You see a verse is beautifully wrapped in the in the background and everything looks beautiful, and you read it. Is it the right scripture to begin with, or are you just accepting it? And passing it along to the next person. What, what Bible is being used? That's what I mean by being diligent. King James only. Number one, we are to be diligent, alert, awake. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says this. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things. We are to prove all things. We are to test all things according to the Bible. To see if they are so. Don't just accept things because people said them. Don't just go to church and hear the preaching and and and, and say to yourself, well, the preacher said it, that's good enough for me. That's really dangerous. Very dangerous. Be diligent. Search it out. Get yourself a Bible. And listen. I know we're in the age of technology, but get yourself a real Bible, the Word of God in your hands. Listen, when you read that book, there's going to be no distractions. No little windows are going to be popping up advertising for you. Okay? You're not going to be, uh, the Bible's not going to be ringing and bothering you with advertisements. Get a real Bible. Acts 7, Acts 17, verse 11, the Bible says, These were more noble. Paul is talking about this church, this Berean church. And after he left, he told the next church that these folks, the Berean church, they were more noble. What, what made them more noble? Well, he says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. He's making a comparison between the church of Berea and the church of Thessalonica. And he says the Berean church was more noble. What, what, what was it? Well, and that they received the word with all readiness and search the scriptures. They didn't just take whatever he said. They were listening and searching to see what if what he said was true. Should be doing that right now. Making sure that I say, I'm giving you truth and not uh, riddles and stories. They were more noble 
because they receive the word of, with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Okay, that was the Berean church. First John 4, 1, beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't just accept everything that goes into your ears and to your eyes and to your mind. Don't just accept it. Search it out. See if it's true. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. It's a warning. We gotta test everything. God doesn't want you to be a casual Christian. Don't be a casual Christian. Don't be an average Christian. There, there, there are many of those. You, you don't need to be one of those. You need to be a diligent, vigilant Christian searching the scriptures. Number two. So what are we supposed to do during this time? And the conditions that we're in right now? Number one, be diligent. Number two. We are to be unspotted and blameless. Unspotted and blameless. Look at this. 2 Peter 3.14 Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Without spot and blameless. God wants you to live separated lives. He doesn't want you involved in things that are not profitable for you, things that are not healthy for you, things that are going to distract you from the Word of God. God wants you to be separated. Okay? The Bible says that we are to be holy. 1 Peter 1.15 says this, As he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. How do you stay unspotted and blameless? Live a holy life. Watch what you listen to. Watch what you watch. Be alert. Listen to the Holy Spirit. When He tells you something is not right, don't do it. Okay? We are to be diligent. We are to be unspotted and blameless. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By the renewing of your mind. The word of God will renew your mind. If you have a lot of stuff in there that shouldn't be in there, let the Word of God come in and renew it. Clean some of the stuff out of there. Okay? We are to be diligent. We are to be unspotted and blameless. Number three, we are to be steadfast. Look at verse number 17. 2 Peter 3, 17. Be ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, Beware, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your steadfastness. We are supposed to be steadfast, standing fast on what we believe, standing on the truth. Don't move away from the truth. You can be deceived. Anyone can be deceived. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? We are to be diligent. We are to be unspotted and blameless. We are to be steadfast. And number four, we are to grow. God wants us to grow. Okay? Verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. We are to grow in the knowledge. How much do you know about the Lord Jesus Christ? Only what you heard? Have you searched the scripture to find out about the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know who his parents were? Do you know the line of his parents? Do you know the miracles that he made? Do you know the discourses that he made? 
Do you know what he said about uh, living holy? About uh, how many uh, demons he cast out? And what circumstances and who got healed and who uh, was saved? What do you know about him? God says he wants you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How much you know about him? Well, you heard his name in the message. That's not knowing very much about him. Okay. You might have heard about him. But do you know him personally? Do you know him as your savior? Did you know that the only reason he came was to die on the cross and to pay the penalty for our sins? Because we couldn't pay it. He died willingly on the cross to pay for my sins and yours. He was willing to come and save us. If he hadn't come, we would be going straight to hell and burn for all eternity. But God was merciful is merciful and he loves us so much that he sent his son to rescue us from a destroy eternity we would be in hell for all eternity thanks be to God that he sent his holy son we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him you know if somebody saved you from going to hell shouldn't you know everything about him don't be a wishy-washy Christian. Don't be an average Christian. Don't be a hope-so Christian. Be a no-so Christian. You know because you studied the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even unto babes in Christ. Paul is getting on the church of 1 Corinthians, and he says, brothers, I can't even talk to you spiritually. You're babies. You're still acting like babies. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. Paul says, I gave you little pieces of meat of the word of God and milk. Little pieces. Of food and not not meat and you were not able to receive it to bear it and neither yet now and you're still not able to receive it why they had not grown they had not grown spiritually they, they were not studying the scriptures they were just you know uh, accepting whatever they heard and, and they didn't do anything about it they have they didn't have a desire to learn more about God and about His Son, Jesus Christ, and about God's Holy Word. The Bible, they didn't study it. They just kind of just uh, lived, you know, like it wasn't important. So when he, when, he, when he came and he tried to speak to them the Word of God with authority, authority, they were not able to receive it. And that's a set uh, testimony. That's why God says in 2 Peter uh, 3.18, But growing grace and then the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are to grow in Him. Growing and knowing Him. How much do you know about Him? We need to grow. God doesn't want us to stay babies. Okay? Don't be a Christian It just goes to church and says, well, the preacher said it. That's good enough for me. You close the Bible and you won't open it again until next Sunday. If you go to church. Don't do that. God wants you to know his son. God sent his son. Think about it. Jesus was in his throne in heaven. He came and he lived like a servant. Think of all the things they did to him. He didn't have to go through all that. He didn't have any sin. But he willingly went through all the pain and suffering for you and me. Should not we know more about him? 
I want to know everything about him. I want to know him personally. I want to grow. I want to know how I can be more like him. The only way you're going to be able to do that is by staying in the word of God and letting the Holy Spirit teach you and guide you. And then you will grow spiritually. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you ever asked him to forgive you of your sins? Have you ever received him as your Savior? If you haven't done that, then you'll just settle for whatever you hear. But in that condition, you won't make it to heaven. You'll end up in hell for all eternity. God doesn't want you to go there. God wants to take you to heaven. But in order to do that, you need to repent of your sins. And you need to ask Jesus for forgiveness. And then you need to receive him as your savior. Ask him to come in. And then he will transform you and make you into a new person. I pray that the message was encouraging to you believers and those that heard it for the first time. I pray that it was encouraging to you also. Uh, I hope that you continue to uh, visit us and hear the word of God. But most importantly, our, de our desire is that you will come to a, a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would know him as your savior, that you might grow in his word as a believer, that you may be able to share your faith with others so that others would also be saved. That is our desire. I pray that uh, the Lord continue to bless you and keep you safe, you and your families. And, and, and would you help me to pray for revival in our country? Let's pray for revival that when the country opens up again, that the churches will be packed with people searching for the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray for me to that end? And so let's go ahead and end with prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the truth of your word, for warning us against false prophets. I pray, Heavenly Father, if there's any person within hearing that could hear the message that does not know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you would draw that person to yourself, that they may repent, Lord, and receive salvation. And I pray, Father God, that you continue to watch over us. Thank you, Lord God, for providing all of our needs. Thank you for our good health. Father God, I pray for our government officials, those that are in authority, that you continue to guide them and lead them. And Father, we pray for a revival in our country, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that our country might open up soon, Lord, that we can meet together, Lord God, and worship you with a full house. Father God, we love you and we thank you for everything you've shown us through your word. And Father, we ask this now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you were encouraged. And hopefully we'll see you this Sunday for Sunday School at 10 a.m. And the morning service at 11 a.m. The Lord bless you. You are dismissed.